last year. Coach Miranda told me they went to bed thinking, hey, the second season starts tomorrow. They woke up, they had slipped to number nine, just out of reach of the postseason. And all season long, their motto this year has been unfinished business. Guys, we've got two big, strong teams out here with their first ever state title on the line. This one's going to be a good game.
territory. Fourth and goal from the two, and Johnson rolls out on the bootleg for the score, 7 0 Eastmore. And the Warriors do keeping the Scots scoreless on the other end. Anthony Keels with the sack, and the Warriors win in, retain the bell in the process, 14 to 6 the final. City League homecoming at Independence hosting an Eastmore team fresh off its first loss of the season and the Warriors take it out on the 76ers 47 to 8 Malcolm Johnson dropping bombs to Touche Hopkins Independence tries to free itself on the punt return but not nearly enough firepower RJ Wallace puts the game away with his third touchdown Mo Hall joins us now from the CW
Throw in Germantown Valley View and Eastmore, and you have Dan Franzak's night. Beautiful night, Bo, in Columbus as both Eastmore and Valley View entered the field at the same time. We start with the Valley View Spartans and kicker Michael Boyd, who splits the uprights from 47 yards out, 3 0 Spartans. First play, first drive for the Warriors, Milan Johnson on the keeper, and boy, is he quick, quickly picking up 62 yards before being brought down. That would set up a seven yard carry for six points by Touche Hopkins after the PAT at 7 3 Eastmore. Spartans back with the ball, and this is easy distance for Boyd, who converts the 27 yarder to make it 7 6 Eastmore. But the Warriors right back at it on the other side with Touche toting the rock for 14 yards out. Warriors keep piling it on after that and come out victorious 48 to 19. Right on cue, it's time to go off the hook and get on the phone with the victorious Eastmore head coach, Mr. Jim Miranda. Coach, congrats on the first win of the first round. Big W for you guys tonight. Yes, it is. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I think our kids uh, worked extremely hard, and, uh, and we played a good football team, and, I, and I'm glad we came out with the victory. Jim, I was at the game tonight, saw you down there. Incredible play tonight out of your senior quarterback, uh, Milan Johnson. Uh, he's playing extremely well. I'm, I'm proud of it. Um, I, I wanted to put forth a challenge to him, to, um, and, and he responded greatly. Uh, uh, he, he threw for over 111 yards, so uh, I think you know his leadership showed tonight. Oh, sticking with the offense there, 48 tonight, but in the games leading up to this, you scored 47, 58, and 57. What is it about this offense that makes it so special? Well, I think we have a number of talented kids, and, and we're able to move the ball around and, and create different opportunities. And, and I think, you know, we're able to showcase a lot of different kids, and, and they're taking advantage of it. Whereas last year we had, you know, a primary uh, player, a uh, elite player, and, and now kids are excited about getting an opportunity to, to contribute. Coach JJ here. As a new day dawned for the Columbus City League, it used to be just the only thing you heard about was Brookhaven. Now you got Marion Franklin, Beechcroft, Independence, Eastmore. You know, is this league just getting that much better? Well, you know, we always have a lot of talent, and you know, and when you have coaches that are working hard and are nurturing that talent, the City League is is a cesspool of, of, with kids or with with tremendous you know ability, and and I and I think you know it's, it's good that they're getting that that attention now. Coach Jim Miranda, victorious tonight for Eastmore. Congrats, Coach. Great game. Good luck in the second round. Thank you. Thank you. left in the first half. Eastmore quarterback Malon Johnson hooks up with Alex Coleman for a 27-yard touchdown. 7-0 Warriors. 14-0 at the break. We move to the third. Eastmore's Touche Hopkins takes the reverse. He goes the distance. 68 yards on the trip play. 21-0 Warriors. And how about this? Archie Griffin on hand to watch this one. He's an alum. 28-6. An upset. Warriors win it. There's Archie. The Blue. Not too many people saw this coming. Eastmore over Sheridan, the second-ranked team in our o and Division three power pole, what happened? You sum it up very easily, speed. <laughs> Eastmore was just way too fast for Sheridan. I'm surprised the, close, the score ended up as close as it did. Eastmore was just that much faster. <laughs>
race a lot. Next stop, Gahanna, Division Three matchup. Eastmore taking on Logan Elm, third quarter. Eastmore in control. Touche Hopkins takes the pitch, and he's off to the races. 47 yards for the touchdown. Warriors up 21-0, and Eastmore playing good defense tonight. Logan Elm trying some razzle-dazzle, but Ronald Tanner is there to make the interception. Look at that, right there. And that would be it as Eastmore goes on to win 23 to nothing. Oh, I'm excited. You know, anytime you come in and you play a, 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 a good football team and the kids play great, it's exciting for us. I'm proud of our kids. It was it was nice. They, I mean, they was undefeated. They had to be good. So we just came out and executed. title game he and his Licking Valley teammates would have to get past Eastmore. Storm Fine has run wild the past couple of weeks. Definitely their Superman but the Warriors slowed him just enough. They force the fumble here on a botch handoff. Eastmore recovers and that sets up a Devin Ross touchdown run. Warriors up 14 to 3 but the Panthers get right back in it. The fake to Storm and then Drew Ryan. He's been running for touchdowns all postseason long. Does it here again? It was 14 to 10. Eastmore trying to run out the clock now. A tough run by Aaron Flo. Watch him take the hit and maintain on his feet down the sidelines, but he would top it up. Storm Klein recovers. One last chance for Licking Valley, but Jordan Broomfield comes up with the sack. Eastmore is heading to the state championship game 14 to 10. Oh, it's exciting. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for my kids. They they work so hard for this. And like you said, it's one game away from the ultimate goal that we set for ourselves way back in the summertime. It's great. true and that they haven't woken up yet. The Eastmore Warriors have plenty for which to be thankful. They'll play for the state championship Saturday morning in Canton and spend today practicing together for the last time and breaking bread with their football family. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us come together again as brothers and as warriors and as family, Lord. Praise God! Please bless the food that we are about to receive. Are you ready? Yeah. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. what? Please bless the coaches and the family members that are here and supported us all the way through our careers as East Moore Warrior football players. Get them up! Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to go to Canton and win this state championship. Thank you for being there for us through sweat, blood, and tears and everything that we went through this season. Please continue to bless the seniors as they go on to college. Please continue to bless the underclassmen as they go on next year to be successful football players and bring us back to the championship again. Three state titles in the books. Now another huge day of high school football starts with the D3 title game. Aurora started off the season slowly, but the Greenmen have fought and scratched their way to Canton. They face the fast and talented warriors of Columbus Eastmore Academy. One school will win their first ever football state title. Find out who right now on STO. That 
is what's going on right now at Fawcett Stadium in Canton, Ohio. The Aurora and Columbus Eastmore Academy captains are out there settling the coin toss. They will kick off shortly for the Division Three state championship. You'll see it here on Sports Time. The Aurora offensive line averages 250 pounds. They have three guys on it, 250 pounds or over. They could have their hands full today with the front seven of Eastmore Academy. They have three guys on their front seven in double-digit sacks, two of Malone on their defensive line. You got the end, Dominic Blackwell with 13 sacks, Darrell Wood, the defensive tackle, with 10 sacks. And what does that say about the pressure they can generate with the front four? And then if they want to go ahead and bring the linebacker, they can too. Anthony Keels is 6'6", 225. He's their strong side linebacker. 12 sacks. That's all you need to know. This is a very talented team. And Eastmore, team. they're not afraid of anybody after beating oh, the one and two twos. They've beaten everybody, and they have shown that they're for real. And again, so much talent on that Eastmore, team. Eastmore, well, they didn't even make it into the playoffs last year. Coach Miranda told me they went to bed thinking, hey, the second season starts tomorrow. They woke up. They had slipped to number nine, just out of reach of the postseason. And all season long, their motto this year has been unfinished business. Guys, we've got two big, strong teams out here with their first ever state title on the line. This one's going to be a good game. The state championship game as you're going to look at the numbers on Grizzlara coming into today. Again, Gallagher in the shotgun. Trips to the right for Aurora. Gallagher under pressure. Throws incomplete. Oh, no, it's intercepted. A great catch over it. there by... Yep, Coleman it was. What a catch. Well, Alex Coleman came in as a special mention All-Stater. He's already made two big plays early in the game. And Gallagher's going to get flushed out to the right. It's, watch this closing by Coleman right here. What a great catch with his hands. Gets the ball to his body and stays in bounds. D. Brizolara was the intended target. Alex Coleman. Good snap. Kick is on the way, and it is Man. good. 35 yards officially. And the Eastmore Academy Warriors take the lead as uh, the first score of the game belongs to the Columbus area. We'll take a timeout, come back with more. Aurora will get the ball back. 3-0 Eastmore Academy in the Division Three state final game here on STO. Down 21 to three from the 30 yard line, trips to the left and a four wide receiver set for Milan Johnson. Aurora rushes four, but Johnson has time for Coleman. He got it at the five. He's in. Touchdown. Alex Coleman with a beautiful reception. 30 yards on the touchdown, and Eastmore Academy is back in it. Alex Coleman catching the ball in traffic with his team. The desperate need of a play. Fourth down at 10, and watch him go up and get this one. Wow. And not only is he catching, makes the guy miss. Rizalar misses and he gets it in the end zone. They're back in it. Coleman's fifth catch of the day. And now the extra point coming up for Sample, who had a 35 yard field goal back in the first quarter. This to make it 21 to 10 if he's successful. And he's right through. So 21 to 10. Aurora's lead down to 11, and now the crowd for East Four Academy getting into this one. It's the Division Three state title game. We'll take a break with a minute 52 to go in the third quarter. Great catch by Coleman. 30-yard touchdown reception, and the Warriors trying to come back. So the Aurora Greenmen are the champions. Eastmore Academy will receive the second place trophy. And once again, Eastmore Academy, a, a fine season. It's tough to get to this point and lose. And uh, they've done it a couple of times down the state championship, Greg. And this is a good football team. And it's so hard when you play so good for so long, but then you lose one game and it's all over. Well, they've had a tremendous run in the playoffs, beating Germantown Valley View, a big winner of Thorn Thornville Sheridan ranked in the state. They were ranked one in the state. Circleville Logan Elm another big win 23 nothing then they beat Licking Valley last week to advance and that's a that's a big win when you can beat Licking Valley that was an impressive win for this program to get here and here's the second place trophy presentation to Eastmore Academy obviously not smiling faces on Delon Johnson and crew there's Alex Coleman who made 10 receptions today what a game he had it's going to be tough, I think, for Alex Coleman to look back on this day. He had a great individual game, but they couldn't get the trophy. Down to the field now. Eastmore, 
The culmination of any successful season is to play on this field for a state championship. You have had a successful season. You have had the most successful season in your school's history. You are the first Warrior team to play for a state championship. On behalf of the Ohio High School Athletic Association, our commissioner and our board of directors are present Eastmore Academy with the Division III runner-up trophy. So the Eastmore Academy Warriors, the 2008 Division III runner-up in uh, high school football here in Ohio, and you know, Roxanne Price really nailed it. What a great season they've had, and really they didn't play badly today, Greg. They just couldn't get a couple of scores in the second half. They had some nice drives, just couldn't finish them off. They didn't have the big plays that they're accustomed to. Certainly a lot of big plays by Coleman catching the football, but uh, was kept out of the end zone minus his one big touchdown catch in the second half. But uh, you're right, they laid it on the line and impressive. The effort they gave today, you know, shows that it's a testament of what they did to get here. To you, Eastmore Academy had knocked off everyone in a brutal playoff run in Division Three, but the Green Men from Aurora had the answer to the Warriors' mojo today. Eastmore is the second City League team in five years to play for a state championship. Brookhaven won one in 2004. Breaks go the Warriors' way early. Alex Coleman intercepts Aurora's Brendan Gallagher, and then Quasi Sample converts from 35 yards out, 3-0 Eastmore. But a Warriors turnover sets up the Green Men, and Gallagher hits Stephen Young for 49 yards and a touchdown, 7-3 Aurora in the second quarter. It was 14-3 when Eastmore committed another turnover. Milan Johnson is picked off, and Aurora will go the final 26 yards through the air, 21-3 Greenies at the break. Eastmore controlled the third quarter, and when Johnson faced fourth and nine at the Aurora 30, he found shifty Alex Coleman over the middle, 21-10 game in the third. The Warriors emptied the playbook in the second half. The hook and ladder was good for 11 yards, but a late interception sealed the Warriors' fate. They came, they saw, and they came close to conquering. Unfortunately, we, we put the ball, you know, and we turned the ball over, and, and that seemed to be the, came, the key to the game. We probably get here and we represent the Columbus City League and basically the inner city schools of Ohio, period. We should have we won. We, we're happy to be here, but we knew we was a better team. We just didn't execute like, we, like we've been doing throughout the playoffs. So not a feeling of emptiness, a feeling of achievement? Yeah, but there's still that, that spot in, our, in my heart that didn't, I wanted that state championship. The Division Three runners-up finished their best season ever at 13 and two.